Four years ago, I resigned as a CTO of the company which I had co-founded. We had helped millions of musicians around the world to unleash their creativity. I loved this company, so it wasn't easy for me to step down. But I felt an urge in me to improve the world more profoundly, to help the very underprivileged. But honestly, I had no idea what it's like to be really poor. So my wife and I, and our two girls, at that time three and five, went to live in some of the poorest places on earth. We started right here, living for three months inside one of the biggest slums in Africa called Kibera. Living among the people, we learned so much about everyday life. But what struck me most was the education system. There are only a handful of government schools in Kibera, but more than 200 private schools financed by small fees from the parents. The children, starting age three, often sit in tiny and dark rooms with little else than pen and paper and a blackboard on the wall. Many teachers lack education themselves, and so, besides very repetitive learning, the children spend much of the day just waiting for something to happen. Unfortunately, there are no real alternatives. Parents just can't afford better schools, and the Kenyan government is already spending a higher percentage on education than most high-income countries. Okay, this is the situation in Kibera. How does it look on a global scale? Well, let's picture your own child for a second. Imagine she has been in school for five years already, and now she fails at a test, a math and reading test, that was designed for a second grader to pass. What would you think about her school? Well, I would try to get a new one. <laughs> but the reality is, in reality, it is 100 million children. Just in India, all enrolled in school, all failing this test when in fifth grade. Looking at the concrete situation in Kibera, and then realizing the global size of the, of the problem, honestly, I was ready to give up. That was just too big, too complex, and the solutions at hand, way too expensive. But back in Germany, my older daughter entered school. She started using mass learning software. Most of the time, she was just repeating what she had learned with her teacher. But once in a while, something extraordinary happened. With an exercise just at the right level of difficulty and a clever way of explaining the topic to her, she was able to grasp a whole new concept without any help by any adult. It was so cool to see. It's like the, imagine like a six-year-old and a computer just teaching herself something essential for her later life. Well, that was nice, but the, if it just happens sometimes, it doesn't help for Kibera or other places, other poor places. But if it would, help, if it would happen always, then it would be different. So my daughter's software still relied on a teacher to bridge the knowledge gaps between different exercises. But what if there were no gaps? If we would build so many exercises that there's always the right challenge for every child in every moment? That would mean we need a huge amount of exercises and the smart software to provide the right choice. Okay, this seemed like a possible solution for this, for this problem, but 
there was another problem. Even with the right software at hand, how do we get it to the children? Well, in the last 20 years, the poorer half of the world has gotten mobile phones. Today, more than 95% of the world population live in reach of a cell tower. For low-income countries, this is by far the fastest and most profound adoption of technology in history. And the next revolution is already underway, smartphones. More than 1.5 billion are produced each year now. And the cheapest ones cost less than $20. Looking at forecasts, it seems pretty safe to assume that within 10 years, almost all parents and teachers, no matter where in the world, will own a smartphone. Can't we use those for educating all those children? So, here was my calling. Two years ago, I started IDU, a new company with a social mission. We have two goals, to build a mobile learning platform that enables children of any background to learn really autonomously, and to engage parents and teachers so much that they are willing to provide their phones to their children for learning. We started with a focus on early math for children aged three to six. These are classrooms in Kibera. Children share a single phone alongside regular classroom activity. During their playtime, they explore a number of short and playful learning activities, finding out about the rules themselves. Every 10 minutes, a picture of the next child comes up and the phone gets passed on. Currently, several thousand preschoolers in Kibera use the app, many on a daily basis. This class has been using the app already for several months, and here the teacher asks, who wants to work with the app? And the kids? Okay, the, the kids seem already pretty engaged. But what are the teachers saying? Well, many report better math and general cognitive skills. Some even tell us that the attendance has gone up and their social skills and self-esteem has improved. In a recent study, three out of four teachers ranked the app as the most important activity for learning early math, higher than any other of the activities even the teacher does. Our next challenge will be to go beyond classrooms. By enabling children to learn at home using the device of a parent. Improving the education of hundreds of millions of children sounds insanely ambitious, I know that. But if there ever was the right moment in history, then it's now. And I think we can actually get that done. And why stop here? These devices will transform the lives of the poor even more dramatically than ours. If we get the smartest people on Earth to realize that they could use those devices to overcome some of the biggest challenges in history, we could actually solve all those problems. The UN has set 17 global goals to be accomplished by 2030. Goal number four is quality education for all. Well, 2030, that's just 13 years from now. For fixing global problems, that's like no time, right? But for a technology company, 
It's an eternity. Facebook was founded 13 years ago. So there is actually enough time, but we have to get started. So let's get to work. Thank you.